With the maiden launch of Starship still fresh in our minds, the follow-up flight is set to be just a few months away. That's right, the second Starship flight is coming faster than you think. After Starship's first orbital flight was supposed to be a huge success, the SpaceX Starbase team is now in the most explosive stage of operation and moving towards their next successful launch. Booster 9 and Ship 25 have been selected as the next stars. Ship 25 is the most suitable right now. It would make sense to test out your heat shield before flying S26 or S27 expendable. Then you have the actual data to make improvements rather than simulation and guesswork. So far, both Ship 25 and Booster 9 are ready to be lit. In fact, they're already halfway through ground testing. Starship S-25 first headed to SpaceX's South Texas launch and test facilities on October 19th of last year, shortly after the vehicle was first assembled. The first round of tests was thorough and put Ship 25 through a pneumatic proof test, multiple cryogenic proof tests, and likely a few simulated thrust tests using six hydraulic rams. Last month, SpaceX rolled Ship 25 to a suborbital pad at Starbase. The space company announced on Twitter that it will perform a static fire test on the upper stage prototype, during which it will fire at six Raptor engines without taking flight. Remember, Ship 25 is currently still equipped with six Raptor 2s. S-25 could have produced up to 1,380 tons of thrust when it ignited all six engines. That campaign can tell us a lot about the status of Starship prototypes. To date, only two ships have completed full six Raptor static fire tests, and both took days, weeks, or months to build up to those six engine milestones with multiple smaller tests. If Ship 25 were to skip those preliminary tests and immediately conduct a six engine static fire, it would be a sign that SpaceX is significantly more confident in the current Starship design. Booster 9, with 33 powerful engines, will have a further way to go, but it also finished its own round of proof tests. About two months behind Ship 25, Booster 9 rolled out of its Starbase assembly bay and headed to the launch site on December 15th last year. The Super Heavy prototype ultimately completed two partial cryogenic proof tests on December 21st and 29th, during which it was likely loaded with a thousand tons of liquid nitrogen to simulate explosive liquid oxygen and methane propellant. Booster 9 then returned to Starbase's factory on January 10th of this year. Raptor engine installations begun since March. However, thanks to significant design changes and upgrades present on Booster 9, outfitting and testing this Super Heavy took longer than usual. Many smaller changes are present, but the most significant by far is the addition of an upgraded version of Raptor. The engine's combustion-related hardware is likely the same as the Raptor V2 engines present on Booster 7, Ship 24, and Ship 25. But the hardware used to steer each engine, called Thrust Vector Control or TVC, has been completely changed. Instead of using a complex web of plumbing and hydraulic power units bolted to the side of Super Heavy, Booster 9's 13 Central Raptors will be electrically steered. That's allowed SpaceX to remove those power units, streamlining Booster 9's exterior, and reduce the already rat's nest of plumbing required to fuel, control, power, and steer dozens of high-performance rocket engines on one booster. SpaceX has been testing Electric Raptor TVC for months at its McGregor, Texas development facilities, but it's unclear if the new technologies progress to the point that 13 upgraded engines are ready to go on Booster 9. Once all 33 engines are put in, it's likely that Booster 9 will be thoroughly tested to make sure all 13 steered engines work well together before, during, and after numerous static fire tests. SpaceX will also need to verify that the batteries likely powering those new systems work like they're supposed to. During the peak stresses they'll likely experience, the electric TVC could need to rapidly redirect more than 3,000 tons of thrust multiple times per second. The peak power required from Super Heavy's batteries will likely be intense as a result. So far, Booster 9 is expected to be tested later than Ship 25 as it still has to wait for the orbital launch mount to complete. But it won't be relaxing for too long either. Major launch pad upgrades should be complete in about a month, then Flight 2 of Starship, Musk said. Yeah, so Musk may not be bragging about this. Gotta say that looking at the original damage of launch pad after the first orbital flight, I thought it'd be four to six months to repair. I can't believe how fast they're fixing this stuff. They're going to be ready to start fitting the deluge system soon, which is just an insanely short time frame. Just getting the piling done would normally take more than two months. 
I can't help but think this was already planned, and the booster just removed the existing concrete for him. Even so, the SpaceX project and site managers are next level. I don't think anyone there sleeps. They're all 24-7, like a finely tuned machine. Based on current progress, the team's going to meet their deadline. SpaceX hasn't said whether Starship's second orbital launch attempt will carry any payload, but said in Monday's application an FCC Special Temporary Authority is necessary for the mission. NASA's really looking forward to this Starship test. While launch site repairs continue at Starbase ahead of the continuation of the test campaign that's targeting orbital success this year, SpaceX is expected to launch a large number of Starships before entering the Human Landing System, or HLS, contract, involving numerous tanker vehicles and a crewed lander. We have a couple of team members in the HLS program that are engaged with the FAA and SpaceX, noted Amit Kastria at NASA headquarters, before adding they're mostly observing and reporting that SpaceX's team already knows what they're doing. I mean, they're very, very good, and so they understand how to incorporate their data. Provided the launch site modifications allow for a pad turnaround without the requirement for a lengthy period of repairs, SpaceX could potentially launch several flights from Starbase before the year's done. This would pave the way for a refilling test to occur ahead of entering the HLS demo. In response, in the recently held Humans to Mars Summit of 2023, SpaceX Senior Director Nick Cummings mentioned the inside of the Starship variant. Those are the things that make us all happy. The interior of the Lunar Starship variant offers an impressive and spacious environment for astronauts. So to give you a sense of scale, I was just in our uh, crew cabin at uh, the Starship uh, Lunar Lander crew cabin mock-up uh, in California, uh, I think it was last week. And the crew deck of the Starship Lunar Lander is about twice the size of this stage. This generous space allows for comfortable accommodations of the crew during their lunar journey. Additionally, the Starship variant provides the flexibility of multiple crew decks, offering even more room for astronauts to live and work. Alongside the expansive crew cabin, the presence of two airlocks, each equivalent in size to a Dragon capsule, ensures smooth ingress and egress for astronauts. Furthermore, a big garage, double the size of the stage, supports seamless movement within the spacecraft, making the entire lunar mission more efficient and convenient for the crew. Regardless, it'll be a long journey that started with Starship's first test flights. So, hope it comes soon. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.